you take a look at what we have, we already have very many files. You can't even start to imagine how it would look or how many files would be here if we started to add components, assets, things like images. So what we want to do is create an SRC folder and that should host all our main project source code. So I'll type SRC and that's going to create the SRC folder. So inside SRC, we want to have we want to divide our source code into different folders just so we can it can be easier for us to find where your specific files are and if someone new comes to look at our project they can quickly find files without having to ask us oh where is this so first of all we want to have components because react is just components everything is almost components so also we want to have navigations so we are going to be managing navigation in one place. So inside navigations there we can set up things like, like the different stacks we have. We can put logic to handle the splash screen and those, those things. So let's also have other folders. We are going to be using Redux for state management. So it makes sense to just have Redux here. Also we are going to be writing some custom hooks, like some hooks to ensure that we are typing all our Redux state. So let's also have hooks here. So hooks. So like I said, our application is going to be a multi-language app. So we're going to have a translations folder inside our source. So we'll have translations here. So here we are going to be putting their configurations for the different languages we support. So also let's have a helpers folder. So helpers, we will have some logic that sets up different libraries. So if we are going to set up things like Axios, refreshing tokens, we'll put them in helpers. Let's also have the config folder. So config here will be managing different environments. So when we will be developing, we are going to be connecting to a different set of server environments. And when the app is running in production, we are going to put logic inside config to be able to use a different set of variables when we are deploying the application. So also, let's go ahead and create a new folder here for constants. So things that will not change will be in one place. So since we are going to be using TypeScript, we are going to be adding a Types folder. So that's where we're going to create custom types. So if you have specific code we want to type, all our types will be in this Types folder, just so we keep them organized. Another thing is, uh, let's have the screens. So so the screens will be the different individual screens. So like this, this will be the home screen. We can put them here. So you can think of screens as the container components. So in the screens, we'll be having like logic. We'll be having code that does logic like data fetching, that does logic like input validations. And then those are gonna be rendering the components that will, that will be displaying the UI. So another thing we are gonna have will be the assets folder. So inside assets, we'll be putting there things like images, uh, things like Loti animations, Loti files. So those are gonna be in assets things like fonts, if we have custom fonts we need to use. Okay, so I also wanna have a services folder. So services will have things like notifications. So if you have like code that is listening for notifications, to be able to handle them in the app, we'll go in the services. Okay, so I wanna change how my folders look here. I will go here and get some file icons. So I'll type file icons. I will just get VS code icons. Hopefully that's gonna look good. Just use that. Okay, and now when we come here, you can see I have some at least things that are looking better. Okay, looking good. So now we have a folder set up. So one thing is uh, whenever we set up a React Native project, it goes ahead to it goes ahead to set up some Git specific folders. So if you can see Git ignore, so this goes ahead to add there some things we must ignore on on Git on uh, for the React Native project. So hopefully we have environment files, which we don't here. So we are gonna be having environment files. So those are gonna be having credentials we would not want to expose to version control. So I'll just have a .env here inside the root. So also I'll have the env example. So if you're not familiar with what the env, so the env example will be, will be the representation of what is in the .env but this will be added to version control, although it won't be having real credentials. So here, let's say we have maybe server URL, and of course you're gonna be changing this one now. So here, let's say we have server URL, and by the way, our server URL is gonna be this. So this is the link you guys are gonna have to connect to. 
So in my case, I'm actually gonna get it and make sure we set it right now. Okay, so you can see this will be the API we will be working with. So we have different tags that are grouping the different endpoints we are going to work with. So you can see there are actually many. Let's go ahead and set our server URL inside our .env. So I'm gonna change this one to be dev API URL. It's gonna be this. And also we are gonna have a server one. So we're gonna be, sh so I'm gonna be introducing that later. But that's gonna be prod URL. So when the app is being used by real users, it should connect to a different set of API. So, like I said, this is gonna be the exact file, the exact .env representation, but without real variables. Let me just go ahead and clean this. So, what this means is once we put this, once we push this code to version control, if someone wants to check out our project, they can use this file to know what they will put in their .env file. Because at this point, we want to go in .kitignore and make sure we go ahead and ignore .env. And also, we're going to be using a mod that's going to enable us to have a specific production file. So when we are going to deploy, we'll have a file that will contain all, only production-specific environment variables. So we're going to be adding that as we go, but let's also add it here. So it's going to be .env .production. Okay. So that's going to be our project structure. I'm sure we're going to have to adjust it a bit, but this is good to start with. So down here, we will have to come in and set up type script with the project. So let's make sure the project is still running. So whenever you have your app running, so you can see how it is, if it, it is connected here. If you wanted to update it, you can click an R, you can just select the terminal and press R. And that should go ahead and reload here. So you can see the project is still running. Let's make sure it is able to run on iOS. Also, let's save this file. So right here, we can type in yarn iOS. Hopefully it just boots up and uh, we can continue. We have an esRint RC file that's created. We're gonna be updating this. We have a pretty RC that's created. Uh, we'll go ahead and adjust a few things here. All right, so once we finish building, it's gonna go ahead and boot up on our iOS simulator. And you can see we have the project setup and everything looks good. So that's gonna do it for now. In the next one, I'm gonna come in with setup TypeScript. So thanks guys for watching. Talk to you in the next one.